One of the questions that, that this we had was about the distances, um, and I think maybe we've you've answered it, but I just wanted to make sure that, that I asked it. But in terms of the distances that are in the plan with relation to how the, the immediacy or the adjacent development, how that's completed, those are how are those what are the, how are those numbers derived? Is that with regard to the legis the provincial and the and the municipal legislation or, or yeah, it, it's a combination of the provincial and the the local city bylaws. Yeah. Um, I, I believe and don't quote me on it. I think it's about ten meters from drip line. Yeah, uh, away that we have to be with any roadways or any uh, yeah. any buildings. So we are fully aware of all those guidelines. Yeah. yeah. And then I guess this is a um, I don't I don't know the answer to this so it's a practical question but so if the when that comes I guess the stages the development stages it would be the city or the a developer mm -hmm. purchasing the rights to develop this area from the university right. when they come up with a proposal of what specifically to do that's then what would be reviewed by the city is correct. that correct yeah. yeah. Yeah, it would be where they would have to demonstrate it's this close, and that will yeah. have this effect or, or not have that effect. That's correct. The yeah. city would, would would involve at that point their various committees that review specifics to development of a plan, whether yeah. it's related to the buildings, well, whether it's related to the heritage, uh, the natural heritage areas, or even heritage uh, as far as uh, historic buildings, if there were yeah, any of around. Yeah, all of those things come into play when the city reviews it. Yeah. Um, most of the development shown in the master plan would be developed by the university. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of it is academic yeah. and, and, uh, and parking and, and um, uh, athletic space. Yeah. But uh, this parcel of land over by the dairy bush is one that was seen as a potential development by uh, a private developer uh, as well as um, over by Wellington Woods, the yeah. research park area. Yeah. Anything to do with the research park area would be kind of a private development, yeah. maintained by the university. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we we would have our our hands and fingers into it, but yeah. we kind of let the developer uh, make sure it's viable for them yeah. that they can make money off it. Okay. Yeah. Great. Well. Uh, Thanks, Gord, for meeting with us and talking and, and sharing the, the, the complexity and the, and the size and the reality of, of maintaining this kind of a, a, like a, almost a mission statement for the, a physical mission statement for the, it for is. the community. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, we call it a vision. Yeah. It's, it's what every, we all get together and we talk about and say what, what's needed on campus, uh, what, what does the neighborhood think should be on campus with the city thing and we kind of all get together and hash it out talk about it do all kinds of various um, uh, layouts and we come up with what we think the vision for the campus should be over the next 50 years mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that what we put in the plan is uh, set in stone everything is reviewed um, when that project is put forward mm -hmm. Uh, but we always use the plan to guide us and say, um, well, yeah, we identified that as a place where an academic building could go or a residence could go. Uh, it doesn't make sense to put in a residence where we, we said an academic building yeah. should go. So those are the kind of things that the plan helps us keep straight. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's great. Thank okay. you. Yeah. You're welcome. Enjoyable. So I think...